Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I have a question for you today. Are you an organized person or do you live in somewhat of a state of disarray? I know I kind of waffle back and forth, but mostly I'm pretty organized. But I want to read something to you from a book. The book is called Living an Organized, Energized Life. And Kristen McGray wrote the book, and we are going to dive into this with her today and learn about the benefits of being organized and how being organized can actually help give you more energy so that you're more productive. But let me just read this sentence because it reminded me a lot of what we talk about on the show about having systems in place and how when we have systems in place, we streamline our business, we can streamline our life. But what that does, it actually takes off so much pressure and it allows us to be happier because we feel better and then we're more productive. So let me just read this statement free to you real quick. Evaluate and tweak your systems. It is all about becoming more efficient and productive in a streamlined space and maintaining these systems will help you achieve your goals. So I wanted to highlight a couple of things there because when you have systems in place, it's not that you just implement them. You have to revisit them and tweak them to make sure that they stay efficient for you. All right. With that, we are going to dive into the episode and the nitty gritty of being organized. Kristen McRae, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Hi, Robin. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us today. and. I'm looking at your beautiful organized desk behind <laughs> you and <laughs> you're very put together just as I would expect Thank from you. the book. <laughs> Thank you. And the book was fun to read. It's um, you break things down so beautifully and so simply that any person, whether they're already an organized person or not an organized person, it's very easy to follow your steps and strategies to get organized and start having more positive energy in your home and your life mm -hmm. and yes. your desk. And if you saw my desk right now, I am one of those people. I have piles of paper okay. <laughs> because, because I'm going to refer back to that someday. <laughs> exactly. And you know exactly what's in your piles, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, sometimes I look and I'm like, oh, that's where that is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey? Sure. So I started my business in 2012 in Rhode Island. Uh, I used to work in medical offices. I was a certified personal trainer for a while. I have a degree in retail management. In every area that I worked in, I was always about streamlining any procedure I was given. I always wanted to make something more efficient so I could be finished more quickly, but effectively. And I would help in later in my career, I would help medical offices get organized, recoup money. And I figured, you know, there's a need for this. There are so many offices that are disorganized. There are so many people that are disorganized that need help and they don't know where to get it. So I decided to start my business in 2012, worked with over 650 clients. I've given well over 150 presentations, wrote my book. And now my husband and I and our 11 year old Shih Tzu Gigi live in Bonita Springs, Florida full time. And I started up my business again down here in January. Oh, well, congratulations on that. Thank I'm you. starting again. Yeah, it's always. And so my question to you is, are you working primarily with medical offices and, and like businesses or are you working more with individuals and their homes now? So I work with individuals in their homes. And then I also work with CEOs, entrepreneurs, business offices, anyone. So I can transfer the skill set to both. So in homes, it's more about getting them organized, helping them become more efficient and productive in their home. And then in businesses, it's getting them physically organized, any business, and then working with them on time management, productivity, streamlining processes and procedures. But so many people want to work on time management in business, but they forget that if you're working in a disorganized space, the first step is to get you organized there. And some find that their time management skills fall into place. I mean, obviously, we need to tweak them and make them work better. But that first step is getting physically organized before you can work on time management. So it's kind of the whole package with businesses also. I love that. And one of the things I wanted to emphasize today with you was the benefits of being organized. So you've mm -hmm. kind of touched on that a little bit. Yeah. So there's so many benefits to being organized. The first is you're going to save money. So I always use this example, food shopping, the prices are out of control right now. 
How many times do you have a disorganized food pantry? How many times do you get that buy two, get two free sale? You're like, I'm going to get the, all the salad dressings, buy two, get two free. But then you take them home and push them into your already disorganized food pantry and find there are four expired in the back. Like I love, I use that example all the time and people, you know, they laugh because they know when they're disorganized, they don't know what they have. And then the other thing is how many of you out there go to buy, look for something in your home, can't find it, don't want to waste the time looking for it. You just, I'll go buy another one. You waste money on duplicate items when you know you have five of them stashed somewhere in the house. So when you're organized, you know where everything is, you can put your hand on it, grab it and go about your day and you won't have to waste money anymore. The other thing is you're just more efficient and productive and you have less stress. Think about how many, say you haven't gone through your closet in a while. How, how often do you touch five things that don't even fit maybe to find the one thing that you actually need for the day? So think about as you're going through your home, how many things you're rifling through and touching before you find the thing that you need. And it saves time when you're organized because if you think about, people say, oh, that's only gonna take one minute, Kristen, big deal, not a big deal. I'm looking for something in the drawer, it takes me five minutes. When you add up all that time that you're wasting in your home or your business, it could add up to hours at the end of the week, hours at the end of the month. And I always ask people, what will you do with that extra time? So, and there's, there's so many more, but it all revolves around efficiency, productivity, saving time, saving money and having less stress and having that sanity of knowing that you're living in a peaceful home and um, very productive and affluent or, you know, business. Yeah. Yeah. And I, this is perfect timing too, because this episode is going to air the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect time to really evaluate and kind of purge so that you start the year off in a really positive environment and, yeah. and feel good as you, as you move forward. Right. That's a year out, right. Have great systems in place, declutter and everything. Yeah. And you'll just feel so much better. And then people will they'll say after, I should have done this like years ago but they can't get past that overwhelm. And I write about that in my book too, like getting past that overwhelm. So many people are overwhelmed, they don't know how to get started. And I break that process down for them because it's not all about the big picture. You have to start small in little increments, but you'll, they, then they're like, oh, I should have done this so long ago, but they just have to get past that procrastination too. And it's the project's not gonna get any easier next next year or next month, right? It's gonna be the same when you tackle it. Yeah, because you just accumulate more. And, you know, that was one of the benefits of COVID. We were all home and we cleaned out everything. Yeah. But I don't understand how in a short period of three years, so much is here again. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> purging. Right. Um, but that's one of the things you talked about is people have a hard time letting go of things or deciding mm -hmm. what to get rid of. Can you talk to us a little bit about that, how to make those decisions and why it seems so hard? Yes. Yeah, so usually I talk about first that when we have so much stuff, the important things get mixed in with the non-important things and it all becomes a jumbled kind of mess of non-important things. But there's some really important things that you might want to cherish or that you might use on a daily basis, but it gets stuck in that non-important stuff. So you have to think about really what you need on a daily, weekly basis. Would it like how we don't need that much, believe it or not. We really don't need that much. Your clothes, how many clothes? When's the last time you emptied out your clothes closet? When's the last time you emptied out your food pantry or a hall closet? You'll realize when you start digging and emptying everything out and you start physically touching every single thing that you don't need half that stuff. And I'm not one to tell people they have to throw things away, but I guide you. And as people are unloading their closets and, and hall closets and spare bedrooms, they start to look at this stuff and go, I don't know why I'm holding on to this. But then you have the sentimental items where people, they, they get stuck because it could be a, have been a grandmother's or it could have been your mom's or, and they get sentimental that they get guilty. They feel guilty that they really don't need to have this piece, but they feel guilty throwing it away or getting rid of it or donating it. So you have to have that conversation of, well, do you want to display it so you can see it every day? Do you want to donate it to someone in the family that might need it? But I always say, don't, push it on another family member because it then becomes a vicious cycle of the guilt of, okay, I'm giving it to them, but now they might not want it, but they take it out of guilt. So sentimental items are really tricky and you have to really have that conversation of, okay, can we let this go? Do we need it? Can we display it somewhere? And when you start to put it in the garage in the basement, it's already halfway out the door and you're not respecting that piece anyway. So just let it go. Yeah, it's true. When I was young, I collected precious moment figurines. Oh, yeah. And then like when we were first married, I had the Dickens villages and okay. I would put them up above the cabinets and they'd light up, you know, whatever. And 
I just finally, I, I tried to sell them right mm-hmm. on eBay, Craigslist, Facebook marketplace, yeah. whatever, thinking, yeah. oh, maybe, you know, whatever. Cause a lot of them by now are retired and, you know, mm-hmm. well, nobody's buying that stuff. Mm-hmm. So they've been in these huge Rubbermaid containers in their boxes for years. Mm-hmm. And we finally just got rid of them. And I was telling my mom, I did this and she's like, well, I want one. I, I, I gave those to you. And I'm like, <laughs> I am I not shipping these from Pennsylvania to Illinois. Like it's time to let them go. Nobody needs this stuff. Yes. And it's funny how the older I get. And as my kids are getting older, I just want everything. I mean, obviously my bookcases are full of books, but mm-hmm. I love books, right. but That's fine. I go through them. And we get rid of them, you know, like things right. that we're not going to keep and things that we aren't going to read again. And the ones that aren't important or significant, right. they're not reference material, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's so true how, you know, I felt bad when my mom said, well, I gave those to you. And I'm like, yeah. I know, but I don't want them. My kids don't want them. And it's right. silly to hold on to them because they're just things. There's so mm-hmm. much more meaning in mm-hmm. life than these things. Right. Hundred percent, yeah. And it's funny you say that about that. I have a story about my grandmother had these really beautiful Christmas glasses, and my mom was go- they were get- moving down here to Florida, and she was getting rid of them. And I said, "No, I want them." And I really wanted them. I wanted to use them. I loved them. They reminded me of my grandmother, and I had space for them, and I wanted to use them during the holidays. My mom shipped them to me, and they all you- they never got here. UPS said that the package got lost, and they all were broke. So I never received them, and that to me was like devastating because that was one thing for my grandmother that I really wanted that I was going to use them. I had a space for them. I cherished them. Like I wanted them. And then they, they never got here. UPS said they broke and they never arrived. So I was like devastated. I'm not really a sentimental person in that sense where I have a few, one big box of memorabilia, but I was like devastated. I'm like, I never collect anything like this. And I was so sad. Oh, that's (laughs) terrible. So on the other hand, there are those certain things that you really like will use and that you love. And then this happened. So it's like, (laughs) I was just, yeah. Yeah. That that's how that's how life happens though, right? Like mm-hmm. we just never know what what's gonna mean something and what we should should keep, should not keep, whatever. Yeah. And right. and sometimes you just have to roll with it. Exactly. Um, okay, so let's talk about because I love this section of the book, how to get energized and how or being organized actually helps us be mm-hmm. organized. Yes. Yeah. So when you're not organized, I can feel the energy when I walk in a home. If the home is cluttered, it has a lot of um, different areas of clutter. There are dead plants, maybe. The energy is low in the room. You you feel tired. You might feel sick. And there's all these things that happen when people are living in a disorganized home. The energy's off. When we get you organized, the spaces open up. The energy can flow freely through the home. The plants are alive. There's not a lot of clutter in the way. Everything just feels right in the home. You'll feel it when that energy shifts when you get organized. And that's And I have a lot of energy. So I tell people, you know, when I'm working with my clients, I kind of get them energized, but more so the energy in the home changes and you'll feel it when you get organized. Even my clients, like their faces like light up when we're done, they they can feel that shift happen. Like, oh, this feels so nice now. I feel comfortable. I feel happy. So it really, it makes a huge difference. And unless you experience it, like that process, it's, it's just, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling. Yeah. It, it reminds me like when we get, I just did this major closet overhaul where I got rid of so much stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. unbelievable amount of stuff. And it's amazing how much we think we need and we hold on to thinking, oh, I'll wear that again sometime. And you never do. But when you get rid of that and everything is so, it looks so nice and all the hangers are the same way and everything's just perfect. And it feels so good. It's right. like, you can just sit down, put your feet up and look at your environment and you feel so happy and relaxed and, and that lighter. positive yeah and lighter, lighter and that yes and that positive energy allows us to then be more productive in other areas of our life oh 100 percent. yeah it just makes you more efficient and productive because again you're not looking at things that you don't need you're just looking at what you need on a daily weekly basis or even monthly basis but yeah and it just you live a more efficient and productive life yeah absolutely so when we're thinking about getting organized in the book, you describe the process of like the piles and yes. it's not just three piles. You have, right. ex- have extended that. So can you just walk someone through 
who, especially now, you know, we'll have, most people have, or a lot of people have that week between Christmas and New Year's off. Mm -hmm. And there's extra time to maybe have your kids work on projects while you work on a project and kind of declutter. How do they start? So to keep you on task, because the biggest issue most people have is they get distracted and lose focus. They end up in different rooms. They start a project, not knowing what what's going to happen when they start and they get busy, but not productive. So after the end of three hours, they have nothing to show for it. So when you're making those piles, well, first I want you to put it on your calendar when you're going to tackle this, because you don't want to just start out of the middle of the day, say, oh, I'm going to get organized because it's a process. So you want to mark it on your calendar, but more specifically time block it. You've all heard probably time blocking, but t- when you time block it, I want you to get really specific for one hour. I'm working in my closet, not just for one hour. I'm going to get organized. I'm going to be in the primary closet working for an hour. I want you to get really specific. So that way, when your hour comes up to work on that, you know exactly what you're doing. You're not wasting time thinking about what you're going to do during that time. So right off the bat, you know, you're going in the closet. When you're starting to declutter, I want you to create piles. And you've all heard the toss, keep, donate, sell. I've created a few more because working with my clients, I find I want to keep them on task. I don't want them to get distracted. I I want to keep the process going. I want you to have a move to another room bin. This bin will keep you in the room because like I said, people start, they end up in another room, then they find something shiny in that room and then they get distracted and now three hours have gone by and they don't have anything to show for it. Have that, have a bin in the room you're working in. So if you're in your closet, have a bin in there. Anything that needs to get transferred to another room in the house, put it in that bin. When you're done organizing, you can transfer those to the other rooms. That will keep you on task. And then if you're trying on clothes, have a, or anywhere in the house, this can pertain to have a maybe pile. So if you, if you have to stop and think for more than five minutes what you need to do with something, if you want to get rid of it or where it's, where it's going to live in the house, I want you to just put it in a maybe pile immediately. Because again, the minute you stop to think, what do I want to do with this? You get distracted and lose focus. We want to keep you on task going forward with this project. So put a maybe pile aside. When you're done, I guarantee it happens all the time. 90% of that pile goes off the bat. And then the other one is if you're in the closet, try on, have a try on pile. Because again, you don't want to keep taking clothes on and off when you're getting, you're getting distracted in the closet. So have a try on pile when you're done, then you can try on that pile. And then anything you're keeping, you can feed into the organized closet that the organized systems that you've created. So I base that around keeping you on task and staying focused during your project because so many projects fail because people lose focus and they leave the room and then they give up. Yes, I can raise my hand to that one. (laughs) That has been me like many times. Um, Okay, so that is all great information. I love that. And listeners, I hope that kind of gives you the momentum to to start. Like you can actually put this on your calendar and then start one room at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so now that we're organized, yes, we've done all this. Now, what do we do to keep it going? So I find that when I give a lot of presentations that people are like, I just can't maintain it. And when you think about what maintaining is, it's a matter of just taking something out and putting it back. That's all maintenance is. But if the system that's the system that you created, which is how you want to function, how you want to grab things, how often you're using things that you're grabbing, those systems that you create have to work for you and your family. So if you have a family of people that are using one area, you have to explain the system to your family. If you have young children, explain to them why we're putting things back, why we're organized now. The be- explain to them those benefits that we first talked about is huge when working with kids because if you just tell them, go put this away, they don't understand why or the, the, behind, the theory behind it. So when you explain to them, we're going to have more free time to spend together. We're going to be able to save money and be more efficient and productive. They kind of get it when you put it in that sense. So when those systems are working really well, it's a matter of taking something out and putting it back. I know it sounds so simple, but people go, well, I come home from work and I get tired and I don't feel like it. Or I, the mail came in and I just threw it in the pile that's already there. I want you to think about how much time at the end of the month you're going to waste putting back things or, or reorganizing things. You could waste three hours when in one minute you could have filed it away, tackled it, or put that piece of clothing away. So it's, that maintenance is so important. And again, if those systems are working really well, it's just about taking something out and putting it back, but also tweaking those systems to make them work better for you. So if, if after three months, a system isn't working, retweak it. What's not working about it is something difficult to put away. Think about revamping that system. So often that's why the systems fail and people give up and then they, they, not, they never get organized again. It's about revisiting those systems and tweaking them to make, work, make them work better for you. 
Yeah, I love that. And then you also broke down in the book, mini habits to, mm-hmm. to build on. And I liked that concept of those mini habits. Yeah. So it could just be mini, start with mini habits, putting your keys in the same spot every night when you come home. We have a spot for our toothbrush, right? Everybody's got a spot for that toothbrush. We know where it is in the same spot. So do that with things that you're using on a regular basis, your keys, your phone, have that designated spot for them. Something else so simple, and many people don't do this, like a simple habit of taking the trash out of your car every day when you get out of your car. I mean, how many people don't do that? It's more people than you think. So a simple habit, you have trash in your car, you have books in your car that needs to, anything that needs to leave the car at the end of the day, take it with you. That's a mini habit. Opening your mail every day. People don't do that very often. Open your mail every day, have a system to process it. When it comes in, it's on, it goes on your to-do list. It's a task. You put it on your calendar. It gets filed away. So that's a simple habit. And then just other little simple habits like that. Little things that you don't realize, again, putting things out, taking the, putting them back where they go. Little habits like that that aren't that difficult to create. But it's, it's difficult when you're not organized because you don't have those systems set up. So you continue to throw, you continue to push and things like that. But when you're organized, those systems are there. It's much easier to function. But when you're disorganized, it's hard to to do that. One of the ones that you talk about in the book that I love, and I used to do this. I'm not as good at it now as I used to be, but was keeping receipts and putting the filing the receipts and then going through your credit card bill and everything. And I used to be really good about that. But then now that everything, so much is online, I you know, I file them in an email file. So I don't have as many of the paper receipts, but it's funny because I just went through a file cabinet a few weeks ago and we still had all the, like all of the receipts and the little, um, oh, like the little, you know, user manuals and all that stuff that came with like baby toys, car seats. Like we still had all that stuff. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Have a week after this. And I got rid of it. But it's funny how um when you do that and then you have that checks and balances at the end of the month, it mm-hmm. it helps you recognize, oh shoot, yeah, we're spending way too much money in this area, or we could shift this budget item to this budget item. And you know, it really does help you have clarity on what's coming in, what's going out. Yeah. Even though the receipts are a lot of them are online now you wouldn't believe the number of people that don't actually match up their receipts to their credit card. It's so important. Like hackers are out there stealing little bits of money from your credit card and you wouldn't even know it. So it's very important to match up those receipts, even if they're electronically, I I still like to print out my credit card and still match up the receipts just, and then file, staple them, file them away just so I have them. But I do keep the ones on email also. I don't print those out, but I still match them up and then purging your files every year, every December, go through your filing cabinet, Mark on your calendar, December 15th, you're going to go through your filing cabinet every year. So now December 15th comes up, it's there for you to do. And that way your filing cabinet doesn't overflow and you're, you can revisit your file, see what's working, what's not working. So that way you don't have to do one huge, overwhelming project of purging. Yeah. Yeah. It's better when you do things in small chunks. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so you also talked about time management in the book Mm -hmm. and we won't go in depth into time management because we've had episodes on that, but I would like you to just talk a little bit briefly about how organization helps with time management. Right. So in the, like in the beginning, I said that when you're disorganized, people like just want to work on time management, but if you're disorganized, you don't have systems in place. You're not functioning like a well oiled machine in your home or your business. You have to get those systems in place physically before you can actually work on your time management. And you're going to find that when you do that, those systems of time management, your calendar, your to-do list, they fall right into place. And then even if you're organized and you want to tweak those time management skills, then we look at your calendar. We look at your to-do list. We look at your emails. All of that plays off of time management because basically it's what you're doing on a daily basis. And once you have your calendar functioning well, your emails functioning well, and then you're working off a daily not weekly, to-do list, you're going to find that time management becomes very easy. But it's just about breaking that process down, not making it complicated. It's not that complicated. It's just a matter of breaking it all down. Like we had just talked about little chunks of your calendar, email, and to-do list. And then time blocking, being specific with what you're working on in that time block. And then just revisiting every week your to-do list. Yeah, I love that. That's really all it is, right? That's really all time management is, is just 
Yeah. And we've, we've had episodes on like goal setting too, where, yeah. which ties into time management, but breaking mm-hmm. things down into smaller steps. So you may set a huge goal for the year, yes. but you need to break that down to quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily activities that are going to help you then achieve, achieve it. And I, I love to do that. Like I have, you know, my yeah. plan, I still have a paper planner. So old fashioned, yeah. I know, yeah. but I love to see I have to see everything yes. and I, it helps me to write it down because then I don't forget, but yeah. it, to be able to break things down to, okay, this is what I have to do this week. Then put that on each day, the specific tasks that I can do in that specific period of time when I don't have meetings or whatever, it just helps so much to be able to, at the end of the week, check things off of that list. Mm-hmm. And it reduces the mental clutter. So yeah. so many of us are walking around with that mental clutter. I have so much to do, but then I'm like, are you using a to-do list? Are you using your calendar? Well, they're like, no, not really. It's all electronically, but I never look at it. People have been pushed into the box of an electronic calendar. Oh, you need to use an electronic calendar. You'd be better off. And then people just like gravitate towards it. But there are so many people that use electronic calendars and they don't work for them. So what just mm-hmm. happened? Their system failed, but they're continuing yeah. to work with it. So I'm a big proponent of paper calendars because writing it down being able to cross it off, seeing what you do, carrying it with you. Like, it's just, there's something different about that than having it online. And I don't know if it's a generation, I'm 52. So I grew up with the paper, but it works to me. I find it much more simpler than to grab the electronics, grab the phone. So I want to tell people out there too, if you're working digitally and the system's not working, but someone has pushed you that way, please revisit going back to paper because you'll be happier and you'll find that you're more productive doing that. Yeah, absolutely. I, to me, it's, I have, it's a have to, it's not an option. And I use a digital calendar so that I have both because, you know, when people book, like when you book your interview, you know, all of that stuff is digital. So I do have to have that Mm -hmm. and it's great for alarms or whatever, but Mm -hmm. I don't really even use those, but Mm -hmm. I, I just have to have everything mapped out because then I can see, Oh, you know what? Okay. Now I can go give my daughter this amount of time because this day is, has been left open for this block of time, whatever. Like it just, it really helps me stay organized and plan for the future also. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, this has been so fun (laughs) because I I love talking about all this stuff. Will you tell the listeners, Kristen, where they can find you, connect with you, learn more from you, or even work with you? Yeah, sure. So you can find me at my website, kristinmccray.com and I'll spell it because it's uh, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-M-A-C-R-A-E.com. Uh, you can email me at support at kristinmccray.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. And you through my website, you can contact me. I work with people in their homes, businesses. I also work with them virtually. I work with a lot of companies up north still virtually. So it is a thing like once I can guide you through getting physically organized virtually, but then I can also work on time management, productivity goals, things like that. The whole package of getting organized and I have my book. I have a weekly planner that I created. You can see I've sold out of them for 2024. You can see that on my website. And I have a lot of videos, a lot of resources online also. I'm also available for presentations virtually if you're not in the Florida area. But yeah, that's how you can contact me. Everything's through my website, basically. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked the book. Thank you. Yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. And listeners, I encourage you to pick it up because if you are struggling with time management or organization, it's a great tool to motivate you and and help you build that momentum so you can continue to have progress, right? And I think you'll feel happier and more energized, which is a huge bonus because then you're more productive. And who doesn't need to be more productive, especially in this day and age. So thank you listeners for being here. And if you liked the episode, please leave us a rating and review because that's how I get such incredible guests like Kristen. And also, if you know someone who is struggling with organization or is holding on to things that you think they should get rid of, share the episode. Let's spread the good and help other people out too. All right. I will see you all next time.